Hello, Internet. Duke of the Bump here. And this is VVVVVV. Welcome to the chat room Anime Flame 12, Darian Mask, Kibitz 2000, Kostya, Red Knight 30, and Sticky Mouse. Oh, and CPC Gamer. I didn't see you because your name's at the top of the, top of the list because you're a mod. And welcome Citron Vand. Now, I know I said in the last stream I'd be doing Bastion, but uh, I'm not really in the mood for it right now. Not really sure why. Oh, Usunora, welcome. So, uh, I thought I'd fire up the old VVVVVV. Now, I, I beat this pretty recently uh, with all the, uh, the trinkets. And just by way of proof, I will continue up my old save here. And as you can see, 20 in uh, a little over three and a half hours. Not too bad. I'm not sure if I'll be going for all the trinkets on the stream. Um, <clears throat> I'll at least try, but uh, there's one in particular that I know is probably going to give me some trouble again because he gave me a lot of trouble last time. Uh, so if I don't get it, I don't get it. I'm not going to stress out too much about it. Uh, oh, you can only have one save? That's kind of bogus. Hmm. Oh well. It's not like I'm going to do anything else with that save. Let me know if the uh, the audio levels are okay. The uh, the last Binding of Ice Extreme I thought was the music was a little overpowering compared to my voice. So uh, if there's an issue, just let me know. And uh, we have the little opening cutscene here. Uh, poor captain. And this is us. Uh, no, keep playing. This is our map. We only have one room on the map so far. It's a pretty big map. Captain Viridian, that's us. And those are the other five Vs in the VVVVVV continuum. And number of deaths, zero. That's about to change. Quite a few... Uh, by quite a significant uh, margin, I would believe. In my last save, I have a little over 900 deaths. That's getting all 20 trinkets. And this is how we save. Alright, uh, so the basic mechanic in this game, there's no jumping. Uh, all you do is flip. Move left and right and flip. And this is a checkpoint. There are quite a lot of these in this game because we will be dying quite a few times. Now there are people out there who can speedrun this game and just play perfectly and never die. I have no idea how that's possible. Um, but that does not describe how I will be playing the game. When did this game come out? Uh, a couple years ago. Uh, I think 2009, possibly 2010. And that is the first trinket. I will go on ahead and grab that. Yeah, 2010. CPC Gamer says he beat it once and got one trinket. You can probably guess which one. It's probably this one. Is this game like I want to be the guy? Yeah, kind of, but not as punishing as I want to be the guy. Um, I, I'd say it's not too difficult unless you're actually going for all the trinkets. Looks like an 80s game. Yeah, it was deliberately made in the style of a, uh, I believe a Commodore 64 game. And the music in this game is just amazing. It's one of my favorite game soundtracks of all time. And welcome to the chat for the love of NES. Oh, all of them but one trinket, CPC Gamer says. Yes, I know exactly which one he's talking about. And Violet is communicating to us from the ship. And the ship is located in that gen general direction. 
and our first goal in the game is to attempt to find a teleporter so we can make our way back to the ship. So yeah, I feel bad about not finishing Bastion before I start a new game. Um, I will finish it sooner or later, and I, I promise I won't have too many concurrent games going. I was actually going to do Bastion, but um, I don't know. Uh, I just wasn't in the mood for a, uh, a keyboard and mouse kind of game. Since I don't have a 360 controller, I have to play Bastion with a keyboard and mouse. Which is fine. But uh, I'm actually using a joy to key because this game doesn't natively support a controller. A lot of people prefer the controller with this game, but uh, I don't really... I don't know. I never like playing platformers with a keyboard. I like a keyboard for, for almost every other kind of game, but platformers, uh, not really my thing. And it's quicker to just die and board back to the checkpoint than to uh, than actually try to go back. Oops. Oh, crap. I forgot to type something into the chat room. Uh, who ate all the gobble Hey, Morse. What's up? Oh, and McGack, too. There's only three buttons, though. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you only use the left and right buttons and the flip button. But uh, I don't know. For some reason, my, my brain just works better uh, using a controller with this kind of game. Do you have infinite lives? Yes. If you didn't have infinite lives, this game would not be, uh, would not be very feasible. And I'm trying to flip myself. Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. I need to go this way. Yeah, that's a ticket. This game has a few little puzzly aspects. Um, mostly it's just uh, reflexes, though. Just, uh... I mean, the puzzles... Really, the puzzles only come into play when you're trying for the trinkets. Mostly. I guess there are a couple other puzzles you have to figure out, but it's mostly a uh, mostly an action game. One of my favorite things about this game is the fact that there's a little title for every area of the game that you're in, well, almost every area, which uh, adds a lot of uh, a lot of character to the game. Uh, welcome, Versher Seven Seven Seven. Oh yeah, CPC Gamer says uh, there is a one life mode, and best of luck to you. Yeah, I would not. Uh, that's not the sort of thing I would subject myself to. Oh, the room Tomb of Matt Carew is a reference to Dizzy One. That's apparently one of those uh, United Kingdom kind of games. Hey, it's Violet. What's up, Violet? And this is the ship. Hopefully I'm not scrolling through the text too fast. Basically, uh, our ship is stranded in this mysterious dimension, and uh, your goal is to rescue your five crew members and figure out a way out. And the first crew member you rescue is really more of a tutorial than anything else, and uh, the other four make up the bulk of the game. It's not, it's not an overly long game. Like you saw, I beat it in about three and a half hours. Well, that doesn't include, you know, the multiple retries. So I would say probably closer to five hours, if you count, you know, the multiple times that I died and uh, quit. And it didn't save my progress. Those question marks are points of interest on the map. Uh, some of them are teleporters, and some of them are the trinkets, I believe. And welcome to the chat, Mercredovich. Where's Raccoon says, I didn't 100% the game. Yeah, I didn't either. Um, I mean, I got the trinkets, but after you get the trinkets, there are a lot of extra challenges. And um, there's the one life mode that you have to play. And just all kinds of stuff, like time trials, uh, stuff that I have no interest in. 
And this is our ship, apparently the DSS Soli. Ship radio status broadcasting. And you can talk to your uh, your crewmates by walking up to them and pressing enter. Chanticleer, welcome. Haven't seen you in a while. And uh, this is the uh, the uh, jukebox. Uh, since I beat the game, it's cool that it actually still saves us. This is just the info on the jukebox. You can change what track is playing in the ship, and you unlock more tracks by collecting more trinkets. I actually really like the default ship music, "Passion for Exploring." It's one of my favorite tracks in the game. And this is the trinket room, and in this playthrough I only have the two. This will potentially fill up by the time I'm done with this uh, this playthrough. I expect it'll, it'll only take me a couple two hour streams to beat the game. This is the teleporter. You can teleport to any previously found teleporter here. But I'll actually stay here for now. God damn it. I almost had the uh, the echo again because I accidentally left the uh, the window open. Chanticleer says I finally bought the Binding of Isaac. Good. Everyone should buy it. It's an awesome game. And uh, there's sort of a... I mean, the, the whole place is totally open. Uh, it's kind of a a metroidvania aspect almost. You, you can go anywhere on the uh... I mean, you can go anywhere that you have access to. And really you have access to everywhere in the game except for one location. And this that location is a secret that you unlock by, uh, by getting all the trinkets. And we found another teleporter back there. And the music change indicates that uh, we're going into one of the uh, quote-unquote levels, which means we're getting close to finding one of our party members. Uh, these lines uh, reverse your your flip direction, and I mean that's the only way. In the see, when I first saw this game, I thought that there was a power up or something you could collect that lets you uh, reverse your direction in mid flip, but uh, no. So no, no, uh, no power-ups, no additional abilities you, you can get in this game. This is pretty much it. Just flipping. Are you sure the audio is okay? It sounds really loud on my end. It might just be because I have my, uh, my headphones turned up too loud, though. Sounds good? Okay. And you can find these terminals uh, throughout the dimension that uh, they give you more of the story. And uh, each level of the game is color-coded, marked off in uh, a different color border. Yeah, that gray area is just the, uh, you know, the overworld, more or less, the area between the levels. Music in this game is awesome. Yeah, definitely. This is one of the uh, one of the video game soundtracks that I actually listen to on a regular basis. And we got our third trinket there. Mean of them to put another checkpoint over there, so you can just die and get back to the the, the last checkpoint. Oh, Oxbow, welcome. Yeah, the soundtrack is called PPP PPP. I really like the uh, the website for this game too. The URL, it's the letter V six T I M dot E S. So the letter V six times. It's pretty clever. 
game was made by, uh, I believe an Irish gentleman named Terry Cavanaugh. And he's made a few other games. Um, he, he's, he made this, uh, this game called Hexagon, which is a simple little, like, I don't really know how to describe it. I guess just an action arcade kind of game. But it has a similar, uh, old console style aesthetic. And, uh, I mean, it's not like, it's not as big a game as this. It's like, you know, um, I don't really know what to compare it to. I mean, I guess like a Tetris or something. Just an abstract kind of, uh, kind of action reflexes game. But uh, it's a Flash game, you can check it out. Just Google search, uh, Terry Cavanaugh, uh, Hexagon. And I completely suck at that game. He made a vegetable game, which is the greatest indie game you will ever play. I don't believe I played that one. Oh, and I'm a gym, welcome. I'm playtesting 13th Age, so I won't be in very much. Never heard of it. Will you be able to uh, to do Terraria on Sunday, Nemogen? Morz and I we're going to we're going to fire that up again if you can make it. That was a pretty good bit of fun. I wish there was. Uh, I mean, I know you both have. I mean, my internet connection isn't great, and I know both of your internet connections are like even worse than mine. Otherwise, I would let you guys be the ones to stream. Because really, the one streaming should be one of the ones familiar with the game. I mean, I felt like, uh, like I was kind of flailing around aimlessly, and it didn't make for very good viewing. This background is very distracting. It's possible to turn the background off. Um, it's one of the accessibility options, I believe. Uh, Hobo Apev 2, welcome. Yeah, one of the cool things about this game is that uh, there are a lot of accessibility options for disabled gamers. Like, uh, damn it. Like, if you just want to see the story and don't care about, uh, don't care about, you know, challenge or anything, you can turn on invincibility and just work your way through the world and it's impossible to die. And uh, you can turn off the background for people who are, like, uh, sensitive to, uh, to certain photo, uh, like, people who get seizure, fo I forget the term. Photosensitive? It's a little too close to photosynthesis. But I, I guess if you get seizures, seizures from video games, you probably wouldn't be playing a, vi playing a video game in the first place. So I don't know if just turning off the background. Well, yeah, epileptic, but, like, there's a specific kind of epilepsy where you are, uh, you're photosensitive. Like, they're, they're, uh, like, there's Julius Caesar, he was just a, a standard, you know, a normal epileptic who's just prone to, uh, to periodic seizures. And then there are the people who get seizures f just from, uh, from certain patterns of flashing light. Yeah, I recently learned that, uh, Julius Caesar was epileptic. Never knew that before. I started watching, uh, the old HBO series, Rome. Really great series. It's a few years old, um, and there are only two seasons of it. But uh, it basically goes through uh, the entire history of uh, of you know Julius Caesar's rise to power and uh, and the revolt against him in ancient Rome. Really awesome stuff. It's kind of like uh, Game of Thrones. There's a lot of you know political intrigue and violence and sex and you know betrayal, except. You know, everything in the show actually happened. It's a real history. And the sets and the costume design and stuff in the show are just amazing. One of the best looking shows I've ever seen. I kind of understand why HBO only did two seasons of it, because it had to have been extremely expensive to film. Uh, okay. Well. Oh, I guess I need to head south from here. Room was indeed excellent. Too bad they cancelled it. Yeah, it definitely, uh, definitely died before its time. I'm almost done with season one right now. I have a few more episodes in season one. I've been working my way through it, uh, kind of slowly. Yeah, uh, Citroen Band, I usually stream about two hours, so I'll probably, probably wrap up about nine. 
possibly a little later. Oh, Pugsmart420, welcome. Josh. <laughs> yes. I named Pugsmart420 Josh, even though that's not his real name. But, I mean, I think it's an appropriate name. And there's another trinket over there that, uh... This one's a little more difficult to get than the, uh, the previous ones have been. Yes, his real name is Chris. But I don't know, he just strikes me as a Josh. Okay, well that wasn't too bad. I'd say all of the, tr all of the trinkets in the game are pretty easy to get, except for about two. And, uh, the, the notorious one is in an area of the game called, uh, Vini Vidi Vici. Appropriate, since I was just talking about room. Uh, welcome, Ankomius. Welcome to the chat room. And, uh, basically, Vani Vidi Vici is a, uh... Oh. Well, uh, I thought that was just part of the background. Uh, Vani Vidi Vici is like a, uh... Re remember that part at the beginning of the game where you had to fall down, like, an entire screen? And land in just the right spot so that you don't get hit by the spikes and then go back up an entire screen. It's kind of like that, only ten times worse. I mean, it literally took me an entire hour of trying that area of the game over and over again to get that trinket. I died about 700 times just in that one, uh, just in that one area. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Fix, or F1KS, and Chaotic Harmony, and Glacius D3. Wow, a lot of new faces in the chat tonight. I think my total death count of 900 is actually a little low. I think I died more times than that, it just didn't record all of them because I didn't necessarily save after large chunks of, uh, you know, large swaths of deaths. I would, like, get frustrated and I would quit and come back to it later. So it's probably closer to about a thousand or so at least. Who's been doing Master, Master of Orion? Oh, Malkash, Malkasphia, yeah. Someone recommended him to me. He's done some cool stuff. Was recommended to try like 90 times and not even come close to doing it. Yeah, 90 times is, uh... Oh yeah, there's a trinket up here. Well, not up here, but this is the way you, you have to get to it. This actually took me a while to find. You have to, uh bounce up and over this uh, this column of spikes and it's not very obvious at first yeah I mean I'd say the style of this game is pretty similar to I want to be the guy just in uh, the way the game is challenging like, I mean, if you try it enough times, you'll eventually do it. Except for the time trials at the end. Because fuck time trials. But of course this game is a lot less, uh... Less intent on screwing you than I wanna- than I wanna be the guy was. Yeah, this area of the map is uh, difficult to find if you don't know what to look for. There's an achievement for a no-death run. Yeah, fuck that. I do not hate myself enough to actually attempt something like that. <laughs> Purest unobtainium damage, him says. Oops. Oh. Well, that was easy. Within a Deep Forest. Yeah, that's another one of those games I've heard of, but never, never bothered to try. Now, let's see. What is the best way to go about this? I guess starting out down here. There we go. Oops. I should just stop saying oops, because if I don't, it will be like the only word I say during the stream. <laughs> that room is called Ah. Cool, I'll check it out. Oh! Let's see, who are you again? <laughs> 
What's that dude's name? Uh, oh yeah, Victoria. Wait, that's not a color. I thought all the characters in this game were named after colors. Like, I know Viridian, Vermilion, Violet, and Verdigris are all colors. And I assume Vitellery is a color. Is there a color called Victoria? Victorian blue. Yeah, that sounds kind of familiar. Alright, your story checks out. Vitellary is a shade of, of yellow. Oh, you learn something new every day. Man, that is some satisfying victory music. Yes, consult the Book of Knowledge, please, Namajim. Hey, I rescued that dude. Or that lady. And this is my collection of Chinese so far. Still not as satisfying as a fanfare that plays in Psychonauts when you get a badge. Oh, speaking of Psychonauts, they recently updated the uh, most recent Humble Windy Bundle, the one that contains Psychonauts, and now it also has Super Meat Boy, uh, Lone Survivor, and uh, what was the other one? Oh yeah, Braid. So, even more of an amazing value than it was before. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, notice that the screen wraps around from the top to the bottom. It also wraps around from left to right. I already had all the games in this humble bundle except for uh, Moon Survivor and uh, Sword, Sword and Sorcery, but I donated to get those two. Oh yeah, and you get the soundtrack to all those games as well. It's quite a deal. Okay, um... I guess I'll teleport back here and see what that question mark up at the top of the screen is. Sounds like a plan. I'll probably be consulting the map a lot too. Uh, welcome to the Black Page. I almost called you the Black Plague. That's probably what you were going for. Yeah, I don't really know anything about Lone Survivor. Um, I've heard of it. I know it's uh, an indie, uh, old school style graphics, like, horror game, so almost. But I don't really know anything about it. Looking forward to, uh, to checking that one out. Uh, let's see. Well, okay. I guess I can see what's down here, though. Random teleporter out in the middle of nowhere. It's like 2D Silent Hill, but done really well. Huh. Sounds pretty neat. Uh, let's see. Alright, well, I will see what this thing down at the bottom bottom-ish area of the screen is. Oh, just another teleporter. Oh, and also, uh, damn it, wrong button. S shit! Some of these terminals, uh, like, point to another location on the map. Like, this one is showing you the area of the secret lab. That, uh, blue area over on the right. And notice how it's inaccessible from any other part of the map. There's no way to actually get to it. Uh, that's where you go when you collect all 20 trinkets. Uh, so I guess I will... Well, let's, uh, put in save. I mean, it, it auto-saves at every teleporter, but... Never... Never hurts to be prudent. 
Alright, I will go directly up and see what that question mark is. I mean, I could really just listen to this music all day. Oh, those are spikes. So, uh, I've been playing a little bit of The Binding of Isaac off stream. Um, on stream, I was trying to. Uh, well, shit, how am I supposed to get in there? I guess you have to come from the other direction. Uh, on stream, I was trying to uh, to beat the cathedral with Kane. On stream, I'm trying to uh, to beat Sheol with all the characters, and I've beaten Sheol with uh, with Eve and uh, who uh, I think Kane. Yeah, Eve and Kane are the two characters I've beaten Sheol with. So I'm going back and trying to beat Sheol with Isaac now. It is a pain in the ass, I tell you. Hmm. Well, let's see. How am I supposed to get that? I assume you have to come in from the other direction because it's impossible to get that one. Hmm, interesting. I have to time this correctly. Yeah, beating the game with the blue baby is one of the hardest things I've done. Um, luckily, I got a really good collection of items, and I also got a lot of health power-ups, which is pretty much mandatory if you're playing as the blue baby. Does that trinket actually show up on my map? Hmm, I guess not. Yeah, uh, for a while, with the, uh, the new expansion, I was getting flying items pretty much every time. But uh, he nerfed the uh, he nerfed the items recently, and I'm not getting the flying stuff nearly as often now. Damn. Wasn't sure if that was possible or not. I thought I'd give it a try. Hmm. Oops. Pretty sure this can be done. Just have to time it exactly right. Because there's a trinket over there, I believe. Hmm. Perhaps not. I could have sworn I've done that before, though. Hmm. Ah, there we go. Excellent. Hyperspace Bypass 5. Oops. Uh, welcome to the chat room. Chocolaka. Chocolaka. And the Rolu. You know, I don't. I don't even remember these skeleton things. Have I, have I been here? I mean, I guess I had to. Have. Oh, and uh, the Shock Ninja. Welcome. Ah, uh, yes, Golik two thousand four. I recognize you from the Twitters. So there was a. Uh, there was a trending topic on Twitter. Well, I don't think it was trending, but. A lot of people I follow on Twitter were linking to it, where uh, there is a petition online, and I won't go into the specifics of the petition because I don't want to get political, but uh, needless to say, it's a petition that I don't agree with, and they were doing a live stream of the dude printing off everyone who, the name of everyone who was signing the petition. Like, there was a stream... Uh, there was a camera pointed at the uh, printer, and it was just spitting out, you know, page after page of names. Apparently, apparently that little section I just did didn't matter. But, uh, obviously, you know, once the internet got wind of this, they were starting to sign the petition with a, a bunch of fake names. Like, uh, you know, 
Ass Boner, Poop Lord, 666, and, you know, more clever ones, and some not-so-clever ones. And, um, for a while, there was a mysterious hand off-screen that would, would angrily snatch away all of the fake names. But eventually, there were just too many fake names for the dude to deal with, and he just kind of gave up on it. Yeah, huge ass, that kind of stuff. And uh, it was pretty funny. I mean, eventually, the bulk of the names that were being printed out were, you know, obviously fake. And some people were screen capping some of the best ones. It's quite amusing. Eventually, the printer either ran out of paper or ink or something, and it just kind of stopped. I don't know why people think online petitions actually do anything. I mean, the results were just too easy to fake, which, you know, was obvious from what happened to this petition. I mean, even online petitions for stuff I agree with, you know, I don't actually bother with. I mean, I mean, I'm not saying that uh, that you can't make a difference uh, online because I think that uh, the whole SOPA blackout made a huge difference. Uh, well, not a, not a, as huge a difference as I would like, but I, it definitely delayed the process a little bit. So uh, you know, done correctly, you know, internet activism can have an effect. Damn! Actually, pull that off. But yeah, just a simple online petition with the list of screen names isn't going to do anything. It's not that easy, unfortunately. Ah, excellent. Okay. Yeah, some of these uh, flips are just insanely hard. I don't know how I pull off half of these. I just kind of keep trying and hope for the best. Didn't the petition for Dark Souls PC work? Well, I don't know if, if that was actually uh, if that actually had anything to do with the petition or not. Um, I mean, I think that was more just the uh, fan demand in general than the fact that they did a petition. I mean, it's, it's kind of like the whole thing with uh, Operation Raindrop or whatever, where they wanted to get those RPGs on the Wii released. I mean, it, they had a large internet presence. It wasn't just a petition. Shit. See you later. Oh, yeah, see you later, Morse. Speaking of Dark Souls, that's a game I'm interested in. I'm interested in trying. It kind of has the whole you know, super punishing aspect of the Binding of Isaac. Um, but, you know, a lot more complex, obviously, since it's, like, you know, a huge involved action RPG. And I I've heard very good things. Apparently the PC port isn't going that well, though, which I'm a little, I'm a little disappointed by. I keep doing things the hard way when I don't necessarily need to. I could have just gone up here. Which taking me to exactly the same place. Oh well. Chanticleer says I have over 300 hours in Dark Souls. That's quite a few hours. Oh shit. Yeah, the PC port apparently it like it uses games for Windows Live. And that's nobody likes games for Windows Live. And apparently it has some uh, some frame rate issues, and you can only play it at like 720p Mac. You can't play it in 1080p, which for a PC game is just ridiculous. Rob Father, what's up? Yeah, I mean, Game from Windows Live wouldn't prevent me from buying a game. It's just uh, unfortunate. Of course, that depends on how uh, that depends on how much it is on release as well. I, I probably wouldn't pay more than like thirty bucks for it, maybe. What's so bad about games from Windows Live? It's just a bloated piece of software. Like it uses way more RAM and uh, and it uses too much of the CPU. Just just a, a dip in performance overall. 
I mean, it's like Steam, but it's poorly programmed. Oh, Rob says there have been problems with not letting people install their games and shit. Hmm. Can I get to that trinket from here? No, I guess not. I have to go around the long way. The solution is dilution. I imagine a lot of these uh, room titles are references to, uh, to old games or other things that I'm not aware of. Oh shit. Yeah, I think I installed a game for Windows Live. Uh, I had to install it to, to play one of the Fallouts. Either Fallout 3 or New Vegas, I forget which one. And, I mean, I didn't have any issues with it in general. Um, like it, it didn't prevent me from installing the game or anything like that. But, uh, it's just an unnecessary blow to piece of software. I mean, I'm the kind of person who thinks that they should just release everything on Steam when it comes to PC. I am a Steam fanboy. Died in the wool. Uh, welcome Grey Words. Oh, Manic Mind is a reference too. Yeah, I, th I think that game sounds familiar. Or, wasn't there a game called Manic Miner? I had a game for the Apple II called Miner 2049er. And I think it's like somehow related to the Manic Miner games. Like it's an unofficial sequel or spiritual successor or something like that. Uh, let's see, now where? Oh, down here I suppose. Everything's going to be flipped to XBL anyhow. Well, I mean, I don't have an Xbox anymore. Which is why, you know, I'm... I'm looking forward to the PC release of Dark Souls. Shit. Manic Miner, the preset, the prequel to De Jet Set Willy. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Yeah, I think I read that uh, a lot of the inspiration for this game came from Jet Set Willy in particular. And I'm getting pretty close to uh, to Vinny Vidi Vici now. I'm going to attempt it on stream. I want to at least. Uh, give it a few tries, but like I said, I'm not going to beat a dead horse. If I can't, if I can't get it after like 10 or 15 minutes, then I'm, I'm just going to move on. I, I might do a, uh, a special stream for it later. I mean, theoretically, since I've done it before, it should be easier for me to do it this time. But when I can't even get past the spikes, I'm, uh, I'm not really too optimistic about my chances. There we go. Yeah, that's what I have to do. What? Oh. Nobody will ever get this one. Screw you, personal log. I got it. This is the hardest set of rooms in the game. Well, that's arguable, I suppose. No, I agree. It is the hardest set of rooms in the game. Alright, I can't just jump over this little block here. I have to go all the way up and all the way back down. <sighs> What's with all their checkpoints? Well, they're pretty much necessary. I mean, you, you see how many times I'm dying in the game, and I've actually beaten this game before. If the checkpoints weren't there, then this game would be... Uh, let's just say impossible. I mean, I'm sure there are people who can beat the game without checkpoints, but they are uh, statistically insignificant. Alright. See if I can even get past this first room here. I mean, it took me forever to just do the first couple of rooms. Shit, I almost made it to the top. Damn.
Yeah, I mean, me trying to do this for an hour on stream would not be very, very entertaining. But, um, I'll give it the old college try. Shit. Damn. Got ahead of myself there. Yeah, it's entirely muscle memory. Yeah, I mean, there's really no way... It's not like you can get better at this. You just have to, uh... To do it over and over again until your fingers just kind of do it automatically. Shit. But I thought I would. I, I thought I'd at least show this off. Duke always keeps his cool, so rage isn't really an option. Well, it's a good thing I wasn't streaming when I tried this the first time because um, I experienced a little bit of rage. Believe it or not. Cool Hand Duke, as nobody ever calls me, really wanted to put his fist through his monitor. Ah, <laughs> shit. I was so excited that I made it to the top that I forgot to, uh, to zig when I should have zagged. I mean, if you watch a YouTube video of someone doing it, it doesn't look that hard. You're like, oh. I don't think it would take me an hour and 700 deaths to get this, but, uh, when you're actually playing it, yeah, yeah, not even a checkpoint at the top. Yeah, when I first did this, it took me, like, 20 minutes just to get to the top, and I was like, there better be a checkpoint or something here. But there wasn't, and I immediately died. Oh, and that, you can't stand on that platform either. You can't even catch your breath, because the platform disappears. Oh, this is bringing back unpleasant memories. Yeah, I had to stop playing at least a couple times and take a 10 or 15 minute break before I attempted it again. Although, I'm doing better the second time around than I thought I would. I might be able to do this. Oh yeah, you have to go down the left side there. If you go down the right side, you just want to fall into that pit of spikes there. I saw a YouTube video of someone who uh, who did this, and they made it all the way back down to the bottom, but then they, ac they accidentally landed on the left side of that peg. So they had to do it all over again. That has got to be the worst feeling in the world. I think I, I really would put my fist through my TV if that happened to me. But I mean, if you can make it past this room, coming back down, it's a lot easier after that. Because, you know, it widens out. Actually, if you can make it past... Uh, if, if you can make it to the yellow room, it's a lot easier. Rob says, I would be very, very vexed. Well played. Oh, shit. <laughs> so close. Uh, welcome to GTF. At least I get to keep listening to this music while I attempt this. That'll calm me down. Uh, welcome the great M. Wow, a lot, a lot of new faces. If you're enjoying the stream and this is your first time watching, I appreciate you checking me out. You can uh, please follow me on Twitch, and I also have a Twitter and Facebook account, and a YouTube account. So if you use any of these services, I would appreciate, uh, I would appreciate your business. Every time you uh, subscribe to me on one of these services, a puppy somewhere in the world gets saved. I don't think I'd rage out, I'd just sort of sit and stare at the screen like, Really? You're going to do that shit to me again? The Great M says, I've been watching your stuff for years. Well, glad you can make it to a stream. In the game's defense, this is the only really hard part in the entire game. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, unless you count the stuff at the end, like the uh, the time trials, and you know the no death mode and all that. But I don't count that. The Duke's actually my bro. Yeah, man, I'm your bro, man. I'm your bro, bro. You have to dedicate your life to beating this game without saving. Yeah, most likely. Although there are YouTube videos of people doing it. I don't see how it's done. I mean, it looks like a TAS, a tool assisted speedrun. But of course, there are no save states or anything. There's no way to actually do that. So I don't know how they did it. Welcome, Enhanced Wizard. Frankly, I think they're all hackers. I think they de disassembled the source code of this game, and they uh, they recreated a no death playthrough that way. That's the only explanation. Pugsy is better than Lost Vikings IMO. Uh, it's a tough call. I mean, they're both great games in different ways. But I mean, Lost Vikings has the whole, the whole co-op aspect. If you're playing co-op, I definitely agree Lost Vikings is, is better than Pugsy. How's it going? Uh, well... <laughs> you tell me. I'm probably silly for actually trying... for actually trying to do this again. But I mean, I've come pretty close a couple times now. I think if I just keep at it a little while longer, I might actually pull it off. Still cool there? Oh yeah, that's a cucumber. That's why they call me Cool Hand Duke. By the way, I demand that you all start calling me Cool Hand Duke from now on. That's my new nickname. I'm no longer Duke of the Bump, and you better get used to it. No, I'm just kidding. Oh shit, I forgot which room was next. <laughs> oh lord. Ah oh, damn. So close. <laughs> Hot foot duke. That makes me sound like uh, a jazz singer of some kind. Hey, what's up you cool cats? This is Hot Foot Duke. Be ready for my next trumpet solo. Uh, so let's see. Oh, uh, Nintendo did their 3DS press conference at E3, and uh, that was just as disappointing as their main press conference. Speaking of my name, why Duke of the Bump? Do I bump a lot of threads? I don't believe I've ever heard you explain it. It's just a uh, it's just a riff on like King of the Mountain or King of the Hill or something. I'm not good enough to be king, and I'm not good enough for my own mountain, but I am good enough to be Duke of the Bump. Uh, welcome, Blue-Eyed Rat. Yeah, I mean, originally the name came from uh, an inside joke with a friend. It was just kind of uh, something random we came up with at one point, and I like I like how it rolled off the tongue. And plus. Uh, you know, it's easy to pronounce, and people can just call me Duke. Unlike you people with incomprehensible Welsh names that I pretty much just make up a pronunciation for. Like, what's his face? Mikudovich? I mean, it's probably not supposed to be pronounced with a Swedish accent, but that's the only way I know how to pronounce it. Yes, Mixes Pitlick. However, that's supposed to be pronounced. Ah, damn. Let me, let me know when you guys want me to stop, by the way. I mean, you know, I'm cool to just chill and keep talking while I try this, but uh, I know watching the same thing a hundred times in a row probably isn't that interesting. Duke seems like it'd be a fun name to be called. It's like you're the boss. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's another reason why it's a good name. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just travel under the trinket? Oh, believe me, I tried that. I was like, this is impossible. There has to be some way I could just go under it. But nope. 
keep going? Okay. You're the boss, chat room. I mean, I've come really damn close. Ah, oh, damn. But yeah, uh, the 3DS press conference. Disappointing. I was hoping they would at least an announce a couple games that we haven't already heard before. Because, I mean, I might actually get a 3DS if there are enough games I'd be interested. I mean, I hate the, uh, I, ha I, I hate 3D in general. I hate 3D movies, I hate 3D gaming. It's a dumb gimmick. Ah, damn. But, uh, I mean, I would play without the 3D. If there were, you know, games I'm actually interested in. Now, the Paper Mario game looks cool, but I've never actually played a Paper Mario game before. So I, I want to go back and do the, uh, the N64 and the GameCube ones first. Ah, damn. Yeah, whenever a movie comes out that's in 3D, I always go to the 2D version of it. Like the Avengers recently. There was a 3D version of that, but I specifically went to the, uh, the 2D version. And uh, Prometheus comes out tomorrow, I think. And I'll go to the 2D version of that as well. You know, this isn't nearly as enraging as it was the first time I tried. I guess it's because now I know I can do it. My mom can't watch 3D, she gets sick. Yeah, that's another big problem with it. A lot of people, you know, just can't watch it. And it sucks for people with, who wear glasses, too, because they have to wear their stupid 3D glasses over their regular glasses. Yeah, and half the movies today aren't even filmed in 3D. They're just crudely, uh, crudely ported. Let me take a drink here. Here's a drinking game for you. Take a drink every time I die. Pretty sure you'd be dead of alcohol poisoning by now. Your liver would not like you. I know I can do this. I just need to hammer my head against it a few more times. I mean, the Castlevania game looked kinda cool, but uh, I mean, I'm not the hugest fan of Castlevania to begin with. And this is sequel to Lords of Shadow, which was a pretty mad game. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's 2D, which, well, 2.5D. And I usually like a 2.5D game. And there's a new, new Super Mario Brothers game, which, you know, it's cool. I don't know. I think they've overdone it a little bit by now, though. I mean, the one for the DS and the one for the Wii were good, but... I don't know. I mean, watching the, uh, the footage of the new ones, they look pretty similar to the old ones. Didn't they announce a Fire Emblem game like the day after the press conference? I liked Fire Emblem on the Game Boy, but that's the only one in the series I've ever played. It was a cool game. I never finished it. It's like a uh, Shining Force style turn-based strategy game. I don't know, the 3DS is doing better sales-wise than it was, though, since I dropped the price. There's, there's still not really enough games to interest me. Aw, oh, shit. Went left too soon. Went right too soon. I, am I right about Fire Emblem? I always get that series confused with Breath of Fire. But Breath of Fire is just like a standard RPG series, right? Fire Emblem is the strategy one. Oh shit! Oh damn. Uh, Eremos, welcome. You came at just the right time to see me attempt the hardest part of the game a billion times. Is E3 over? Ah, oh, 
Oh shit. <sighs> I think E3 is over. But we have GDC coming up pretty soon. And as someone in the chat room said yesterday, GDC is always where the really interesting shit is announced. Damn. Shit. <sighs> well, let's see. How many deaths do I have now? Uh, 308. Excellent. Let's save. Why not? That's, that seems like a record worth saving. Uh, Vanderhoek X, welcome. I have a lot of patience. Well, you know, part of it is just being able to hang out and talk to people while I do it. But I mean, I did, you know, beat it legit before, too. I don't know why I say legit. It's not like it's not legit since I'm talking to people. E3 went from being an industry conference to a consumer conference, so of course it's going to be less cool. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, they still only allow press in, right? I mean, you can't get into E3 if you're just anyone. Proton John had 299 deaths in Battletoads. I don't think I could even beat Battletoads. I mean, maybe if I, like, use save states, but, like, beating it legit. Because that was back in the day before you had, you know, checkpoints and saves and all that. I need to get over to the left sooner for that part of the screen. But I don't need, I don't want to go to the left too soon because I'll run into the spikes prematurely. I mean, it's really a measure of degrees trying to beat this part. I mean, if you're just a microsecond too late, or too late or too soon, then you're gonna have a bad time. Uh, welcome, Zane Sands. I've seen a speed run of VVVVVV. Yeah, me too. That that was a dude who uh, I think hacked the game. Because I don't see how it would be possible otherwise. To play this game completely flawlessly without dying once. I don't know though. People are crazy. Just say the word when, uh, when you want me to move on by the way. Uh, Odin 337, welcome. This is some good music. I'm so close, I can't quit now. I agree. Shit. Expletive. Balderdash. Poppycock. Bake sale. Uh, Squeedly Spooge. I'm just going to start inventing. Well, I didn't invent that one. That's from Invader Zen. Inventing profanity. to liven things up a little bit. <gasps> uh. Well, I proved I could do it. I just didn't do it. Oh, Lord. Well, I did it once, I can do it again, right? Oh, shit. Oh, 
Oh man. Barnacles. Jiminy Jillikers. There we go. I have found a shiny trinket. 9 out of 20. Yes, you did tell me about the stairs. See, when I first did this, I thought that, uh, I thought that you had to actually reach a checkpoint before you died, or else you had to get the trinket again. But fortunately, that's not the case. Someone called the strippers. Yes, I, I do think I deserve strippers at this point. At least 20. That was a, uh, that was a 20 hooker accomplishment, I would say. One, oh, stripper, not hooker. Well, either way. I want to make my own game with blackjack and hookers. In fact, forget the game. No, I would never do that for real. Uh, oh yeah. I forgot what I was supposed to do there. You have to, uh, to free this platform. Free the platform, my brother. Oh yeah, I was about to, uh, to go to the wrong place. But I've already been up there. What do you have to say, Terminal? Yep, sounds reasonable. That's sure what you just said for you. B -b -b busted. Oh yeah, this is a tricky trinket. You have to um. Well, I'll show you. You cannot get either of these checkpoints if you want to get the trinket in this room. You have to make it to the other side without hitting another checkpoint, free the platform, and then die on the same screen so that you respawn at this checkpoint. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Nufi Banga. <laughs> For beating the game without dying you get seven versions. Doesn't seem like enough. Yeah, the rest of the game isn't nearly as hard as what I just did. And what I just did would have been way harder if I hadn't done it before. This is one of the only really puzzly aspects to the game. It took me a while to figure out what I was supposed to do here. Well first I need to figure out how to get past these uh, hourglasses. See it says a deception, meaning you're not supposed to get these checkpoints. Or that checkpoint either. Or that checkpoint. You cannot get any of those checkpoints. Or these checkpoints. Now for me, these are the hardest ones to avoid. You have to fall down and then hold to the left so you don't hit that checkpoint. But you can't fall into the spice either. Never know who's going to show up for Duke's show. Wait, who showed up? Did someone famous join my stream? If so, I apologize. Because I don't recognize any of the names. I do watch streams. Just, I tend to watch streams from people I know. Assuming it's the real one, Nufi Banga. Oh. Well, uh, thank you, if you are famous. Wow. I actually did that on the first try. Alright, you have to free that platform. And then kill yourself. And then... Voila. Simple. Wow, that's half the trinkets already. Not doing too bad. Postmark 420 is famous just in disguise. Well, I mean, how could you not be famous with a name like that? I mean, that's a presidential name you have there. Alright, well, now that we have, uh, 
Now that we got the trinket, we can do this section normally. Oops. See, it's a good thing that I'm streaming this when all of this is like fresh in my mind. Like, if I waited like six months before I streamed the game, then uh, I would not be having nearly as good of a time as I'm having now. Duke's a beast, we should call him Duke of the Beast. Well, that doesn't sound very flattering. Hey, it's you! Whatever your name was. Verimily or whatever. Yeah, but shouldn't you reverse the polarity of the tachyon beam first? I'm pretty sure that's, uh, that's Technobabble that I've heard before. Vitellery. Yes, that's his name. And we warp back to the ship. Perfectly normal situation. Back on the ship. Yep. That's where we are. The ship. Oh, wait. This isn't the ship. And this is one of the other puzzly aspects of the game. Not only do we have to survive, but we also have to make sure uh, Vitellery survives. Or however you're supposed to pronounce that name. Vitellery. That's how it looks to me. That's, that's how I will say it. They announced that the most recent FE game will be released stateside. FE. I feel like I should know that. Now, he'll only move when I'm standing on the floor. When I'm standing on the ceiling, he'll stay where he is. Which is how we need to uh, make him avoid these things. Now, I don't know why they can't flip, because you see people flip and reverse gravity when they're actually on the ship. But they can do it here for some reason. Oh, Fire Emblem. Duh. Stay there. Stay there. And run. Good job. Oh, that wasn't too terribly difficult. What was what? The big C thing. <laughs> it's probably best not to acknowledge that it's there at all. That's why I go through my life for most things. That's my fundamental philosophy of life. Don't think about it too much. Probably best not to acknowledge it. Oh shit. <laughs> oh, I was doing so well too. Oops. Too much too soon. Oh, nope. That's a bad, bad yoke man. Or yoke woman. Okay. Do not walk into the. I just told you not to walk into the spikes. Why did you walk into the spikes? Being able to grind defeats the spirit of the game. Are you still talking about Fire Emblem? Because yeah, that would be kind of weird if you could actually grind for experience points. I really need to play more turn-based strategy games. I haven't played nearly enough. Vitellery is the scientist. Each member has unique things they say. Hmm. Interesting. Oh yeah, I remember what I have to do here. Okay. 
I have to make my way over to the other side. And then I have to coax him across the platforms. I don't know why I flipped there. I don't know why I walked into the spikes. I don't know why I do a lot of things. Okay. You can't dawdle on these platforms either. There we go. Okay. This this part's actually a little tricky. I had to retry quite a few times to do this. Uh, welcome, Sir Gumby. And that's not enough. We also have to make our way back across now. Whew. And back across once more. <laughs> and I'll just walk directly into the spikes. Good job, Duke. A plus. I pull off all this badass shit, and then I just make the dumbest mistakes. It's like, dude, why did I push the button? Alright. Actually, it'd probably be easier if I did this, instead of trying to walk onto the platform. There we go. Well done, me. I want to pat myself on the back for that one. That was the sound of me patting myself on the back. Ah! Mind your head. <laughs> Indeed. Hmm. Hmm. How did I do this one? Pretty sure I have to, uh... No. Well, I guess you're coming with me then, dude. Hmm. Oh, okay, I remember. You have to, uh... You have to pause in those little breaks in between the spikes there. Don't raise the roof, Duke. You'll get impaled. Well, I've already been impaled in quite a few times. Hmm. That was interesting. Why not make a new skies of Arcadia? When it comes to Dreamcast RPGs, I think they should make a new Grandia. Because Grandia... Th Grandia 2 was amazing, but Grandia 3 was kind of disappointing. I never played Skies of Arcadia, though, but I hear good things about it. Whoop. There we go. You just, you just can't stop. You have to keep walking. Uh. Oh, I remember. I am the expert puzzle solver. And we're done. Let's go back to the ship. I'm sure nothing else could possibly go wrong. And Grand Day 3 was great up to uh, up to the second disc. After the second disc, everything kind of started going downhill. Alright, well, uh, I'm doing pretty well. We have 10 sh shiny things of indeterminate use to us. Uh, well, let's see, where to now? I should play Skies. Yeah, I don't have my Dreamcast anymore. Otherwise, I might try it one of these days. I could get another Dreamcast, they're pretty cheap. Good job. I mean, good job. I mean, good job. <laughs> uh, I love Homestar Runner. Well, rest in peace, Homestar Runner. I guess I could teleport. Um, oh, I know what I should do. I should do the uh, the tower next. The tower is a lot of fun. Alright, I will... I 
Eh, I think I'll just leave the normal way. Oh, Ventus Knight, welcome. The tower is pain. Well, not nearly as much pain as the things I've already done. Now, if I remember correctly, the tower is off in this general direction. It's quite possible that I don't remember correctly, though. My memory is notor notoriously bad. Like when I play the Binding of Isaac, and I forget I have a tarot card. That could be helpful. Uh, let's see. Well, this isn't the right way to get to the tower, I don't think. I don't know, this looks right. Maybe I circle back around. Homestar Runner is dead. Yeah, more or less. There was a Christmas update. Oh yeah, this is the tower. Okay, excellent. There was a Christmas update a couple years ago, but uh, that was the last thing they've really done. Now, if you go too far up, if you go so far up that you actually fall off the screen, then spikes appear and you die. So you can't get too far ahead of yourself, but you also can't, you obviously, you can't, be, you can't hold yourself too far back. And there's a trinket there, and in order to get it, you have to, uh, you have to do this the hard way. And, uh, just give me a second and I'm sure I will, oh wait, I think I already fucked up actually. Oh wait, no, 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 okay, this is still doable. Alright, you have to go... This trick is actually pretty tough because if you go too far ahead, you hit a uh, you hit a checkpoint, and then there's no way to get it. You have to start over and and come back to this place all over again. Hmm. Okay. All right. I see what I have to do. I have to fall here, but not too fast. Flip here, here, here. Damn! So close. Alright, concentration. I have this on the 3DS. Oh yeah, uh, the 3DS board of this actually came out. I knew it was uh, it was in the works. I didn't know uh, it had been released. I think it's an eShop download. How much is it on 3DS? Because I imagine this is the kind of game that's suited really well to a uh, to a portable experience. You know, you can play it in in pretty short bursts. I hope I'm doing this right. It seems like I'm. Uh, it seems a little impossible the way I'm trying to do it now. Maybe I just have to be faster. I don't know. Five hundred Nintendo points translates to like five bucks, right? Oh, I think I have to. Uh, yeah, there we go. There we go. Good job, Duke. I knew you'd figure it out sooner or later. Yeah. Oops. Oh well. At least I made it to the checkpoint. Uh, Res09, welcome. Glad you can make it. Oops. I guess I should uh, not get stuck on the steps. Oh, damn. You have to land on the on that little nub in there, that little outcropping. It's slightly difficult. Yay! Twelve out of twenty. That's what. So twelve times five. 60. Well, not quite a passing grade yet. Helpful arrow there showing you where you have to, uh, to go.
Hmm. Ah, oh, damn. Almost there. So does anyone else here subscribe to, uh, to Ultra J-Man? He did a playthrough recently of The Binding of Isaac, where he actually played all the way through and beat Satan and everything. And it was just embarrassing how easily he did it. I mean, here I struggle to beat Satan. You know, I've tried multiple times. I've only been able to actually beat him twice. And he just blew right through the game. Oh, hi, Nader. Welcome. Glad you could make it. It's all luck with that, though. Yeah, that's true. He did get a, uh, a very good set of items. Well, back to the ship. Just like last time. I'm sure nothing could possibly go wrong. Wow, only one remains. Oh, damn, something went wrong. <laughs> Whee! Oh, yeah. This is where the game kind of starts messing with your head a little bit. Oh, yeah. I forgot about this part, too. You have to survive for 60 seconds, but luckily you don't have to survive for 60 seconds in a row. As long as you live for 5 seconds at a time, then uh, you can gradually make your way down. Like see, I, I survived for 5, so the timer starts at 55 instead of 60. But once you get all the trinkets, you can unlock a version of this where, uh, where there are various achievements for, uh, for surviving you know, X number of seconds in a row. Like, there's a trophy for, you know, 10 seconds in a row, all the way up to surviving all 60 seconds. Which, I can't imagine myself ever doing. See, I remember, I, before I ever played this game, I was watching, uh, Sam, S.S. Skinner, stream this, and I thought she was reversing her flips herself. Like, for some reason, I didn't notice that the uh, the white lines were there bouncing her back and forth. So I thought, damn, that seems pretty tough. But no, you don't actually have to reverse yourself. You just, uh, just have to focus on survival. So yeah, in my free time, I've been uh, trying to beat Sheol with Isaac, which... Man, I don't know. I'm worried. I, I'm worried that I hit a wall in that game. I'm worried that if I keep trying to stream by any of Isaac, it's going to be forever until I actually start doing well again. I mean, this is another situation where if you actually wanted to survive all 60 seconds, you pretty much the only way to do it is to memorize the pattern. Because it goes too fast for you to uh, to actually think about what you're doing. I don't know. I mean, I'll keep uh, I'll keep at Binding of Isaac, but uh, I don't know. I mean, the cathedral is not as hard as Sheol, but it's still pretty damn tough. I was disappointed that I didn't beat the cathedral on, on my last stream. Because, I mean, I was doing pretty well up until the end. Yay, I survived. I wonder if you can get both technologies. You know, ever since the expansion came out, I haven't even seen Technology 1. Every time I get Technology, it's always Technology 2. That's why I thought uh, they replaced Technology 1, but apparently it's still in the game. I would like to see you finish Sheol with question mark, question mark, question mark, Duke. Not gonna happen. 
I'm sure there's a Kaizo version where it resets to 60 every time. Yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the challenges once you, uh, once you get all the trinkets. I'm a Judas player. Either I die in the first two floors or I beat Mon. Yeah, I mean, uh, Judas is pretty good if you can actually get more health with him. But I don't play with any character that starts with one heart. I mean, Kane's still my go-to guy. <laughs> again, let's go again! Hey, screw you, you didn't do it. Well, I don't know, maybe you did. I recommend getting a goat hoof that increases damage. Yeah, I still don't know what like 90% of the trinkets in the game do. Uh, welcome to the chat room, new new or cancer. Yeah, cancer is pretty good. That's a statement you won't hear very often or ever. And I might be a horrible person because I just said that. I don't know. I'll have to uh, meditate that to determine if I'm a horrible person or not. But yeah, Cancer is pretty awesome. And, and Biny of Icy. What do you think of my shinies? Oh yeah! I forgot that you have to actually talk to her to get one of the trinkets. Oh yeah, now it shows you where the remaining trinkets are. I was wondering wondering why they weren't showing up on the map. Don't put yourself in any danger though. What are the odds of that happening? After talk to the girl guarding the trinkets. Oh, you were just telling me to talk to her, yeah. Alright, well, good deal. We have one more person to rescue, Vertigris, and we have five more trinkets to find, or six? Yeah, six. Hmm, well, one of them's like right outside the ship here. I should look into getting that. I did learn not to use $3 bill or my reflection with the pickaxe, though. Yeah, man, what, what would uh, what would the $3 bill do to Ipecac? That would be pretty ugly, I would say. Oh, damn. I need to go around the ship. I'm so fat that when I sit around the ship, I sit around the ship. Boy, try saying that three times fast. Sit around the ship, shit. Sit around the ship, sit around the ship, shit. <laughs> and the trinket is south from here, so I must be on the right track. Of course, I use the term south loosely. I'm pretty sure direction does not apply in this dimension. I was wrong about that being the mindfucky area, too. The next area is the mindfucky one. Uh, well, let's go for that other trinket up to the, uh, quote unquote, northeast. Whee! Oh, damn. I don't know what happened with the captions in my last stream video, by the way. For some reason, it, uh, when I used, uh, when I used the script to, uh, to translate the chat log into subtitles, like, it totally desynced it, and I, I don't, I don't understand why. I haven't seen the Exergia recently. 
Real side, ask him if he knows what's going on. I guess I could send him a message. Man, so cool of that dude to uh, make that script for me. As far as I know, I'm the only one on Twitch who actually uh, has the chat log as an option in his, uh, in his stream videos. Now, some people actually record the chat window in the video itself, which isn't an ideal option because uh, you know it reduces the screen real estate. And if you don't care about the chat, then you know that's uh, a negative. But when you do it as subtitles, you can either read the chat or ignore the chat. It's totally up to you. I can't even get the subtitles on videos I'm watching? Really? Why not? That's odd. Is it like a regional thing, maybe? Uh... Let's see. Well, I guess... The next logical place for me to go would be, uh, here. I can head off to the left there and get that uh, trinket down in the lower left. Yeah, are you actually turning on the captions? You have to hit the little uh, CC button to make them show up. Did you try turning, turning your computer off and back on? Because that solves like 90% of all technical issues. And if that doesn't work, reinstall Windows. And if you're on the Mac, then may God have mercy on your soul. On Duke Stream Video, they hit captions and they say they're not available. It's weird. Where do you live? Maybe, like, if since I set the chat, I set the captions as being in English, maybe it doesn't. Well, see, that doesn't make any sense. If it doesn't make them available if you're not in an English speaking country, but I don't see why that should matter. Yeah, if reinstalling Windows doesn't help buy a new computer, you're in the US. Huh, that is bizarre. Does anyone else have trouble getting the captions? Maybe you need to update Flash or something. I don't know. Holy shit. I am totally freaking out, dude. What the hell? <laughs> Aww. The elephant's sad and it made me sad. <laughs> yes, the elephant is the true secret final boss of the game. Just kidding. It's a reference to some old Commodore 64 game. Or one of those other European friendly computers. CPC Gamer will probably know better than I would. It might be a reference to uh, Jet Set Willy. Well, let's see. Um, let's go down to the right. Well, no. Oh, I see. Hmm. Okay, well, let's just make my way back to a teleporter for now. What's the closest teleporter? I guess there really aren't any that close. The elephant in the room was a dream Terry had. He put it in, in the game to confuse players that don't read his blog. Uh, that, uh, that does sound feasible. I read something that said it was a reference to some old game that, that might have been bullshit. Oh, there's a trinket up in this yellow area. Well, yellow on the map anyway. That I still need to get. Why do I flip there? Why does my thumb automatically go to that button? I guess it's because these platforms don't look very stable. How the hell do I get to that? I don't understand. Like, you can't go down this way. I do not remember how I actually got to that.
Hmm. This might take a little bit of detective work. Go under the pink platforms. Oh, yeah. Well, I can't do it that way. Thanks, Rezo9. I mean, I'm sure I would have remembered eventually, but you just saved me some time. Can I even go back this way? I don't think I can. Hmm. Might be trickier than I thought. See, I can't, I can't flip myself. Hmm. I wish I didn't get that other checkpoint. I might have to uh, circle all the way around before I can get that. Yeah, I, I think that's the case. Okay. Well, that shouldn't take too long. Okay, yeah. Definitely can't go that way. Surely you can get over there, you can go on the first one beforehand. Can I? Oops. Well now I don't think I can make my way past this. Alright, well, let's just, uh... Damn, I'm gonna have to make my way all the way back up to that other teleporter. Okay. Get on the closest one when it's furthest down. Will that work? It seemed like I would get stuck again. Oh, this is going to be a pain in the ass. Uh, welcome, Jellybean. You know what? I'm just going to go around. It'll be a lot easier than me trying to, uh, trying to break the game. Now that you guys are describing how it works, yeah, that, that does make sense. Maybe I should just load the game from the last teleporter. Well, I, I'm almost at the teleporter anyway. Pretty close to it. You know, they really nailed the, uh, the instant respawn in this game. Like, if the respawning wasn't as instantaneous as it is, then this would be significantly more annoying to try to play. I say they, I mean he. He was made by just one dude, pretty much. Terry Cavanaugh. Oh yeah, I have to get past the lies again. I'm sure this is a metaphor for something meaningful. There we go. Okay. I'm going to teleport. Well, I guess the closest place would just be back on the ship. Wait, no it wouldn't. What am I thinking? The closest place is here. Alright, this time, I won't be a dummy. Well, I won't be a dummy in regards to that puzzle. I can't make any guarantees for any other time. This game is a metaphor for progress. Hmm. 
You know the game Bejeweled? That game is like a metaphor for video games. I downloaded a version of Bejeweled on my phone, and it's like playing a video game simulator. Like, I feel like I'm accomplishing something, but it's Bejeweled, so I'm really not. I mean, it's not actually Bejeweled, it's, just, it's called Jewel Star or something like that. Something dumb. Alright, let's, uh, let's try going backwards instead of going all the way back around again. I wish there were better games for Android. Yeah. Yeah, I was really dumb not to, uh... But see, even when I do that, though... Does anyone know any good Android games? See, even when I do that, I still get stuck going back across. Bejeweled is actually really brilliantly br brilliantly designed, says Not a Gem. Well, yeah, if your goal is to uh, is to hook people, I mean, it's basically you know the same reward loop as like Diablo or something. Okay, there we go. All right, but now now I can't get back up that way. I mean, Bejeweled is basically like a slot machine. Like, you move the jewels around, and hopefully you move them around in a satisfying enough order that, uh, that you score a lot of points. I mean, it's a good time waster. Yeah, it, it rewards you with just enough points to make you feel good about yourself. Yeah, I mean, they definitely have the psychology of, uh, of addiction down. I mean, I'm sure they make a billion dollars off of the Facebook version by, uh, by charging microtransactions for power-ups. They give you better chains or something. Yeah, see, Puzzle Quest is actually interesting, because you can actually affect the game in some way. Unlike in Bejeweled. I mean, Bejeweled makes you feel like a badass. You're like, fuck yeah, look at all those chains I just got. When really, you just, you know, happen to move... You know, move the jewels in just the right way. I mean, you don't actually plan the chain. I, mean, I guess you can to a certain extent, but not, uh, you know, not to the degree that would make it an actual game. But unfortunately, it's the best thing on my phone right now. Well, except for, like, Solitaire. Solitaire is a good time waster. I mean, I like Android a lot. But, uh... The, the software market just isn't as robust as the iOS market, sadly. Which, I mean, you, you think it would be bigger because there are more Android phones than there are than there are iPhones. Because there are, you know, dozens of different hardware, you know, dozens of different handsets running Android. So, you know, as popular as iPhones are, I mean, I I don't know if Android actually dominates the market. I think it's about even, actually. You know, spread out across dozens of different handsets. And tablets, I guess. I don't think anyone actually owns an Android tablet, though. Well, except the Kindle Fire. Chrono Trigger is the best game on my Android. Yeah, but you have to use a stupid virtual D-pad. I hate playing games with a virtual D-pad. Now, if they would actually make a port that, like, use the touchscreen, you know, to good effect, you know, if it actually had good touchscreen controls, then yeah, that would be awesome. I could sit there and play Chrono Trigger on my phone. But, eh. Virtual D-pads are just so uncomfortable to use. 
Now what I could do is I could get a Wiimote and uh, and use it with my phone, but then I'd have to like set my phone down, you know, on the desk in front of me and use the Wiimote that way, and that's not always feasible. Uh, well, let's head up to that big unexplored section of the map up there. Making games for Android is basically making games for Linux. Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit more to it than that, but... I mean, I'm pretty sure anyone can uh, make an Android game with open source tools. Which is cool. I just wish more people would. I mean, I'm always hearing about awesome uh, iPhone games, and I'm like, damn it, when are you going to make an Android port? But it never happens. If I wanted to play portable games, I wouldn't use a phone. Well, yeah, I mean, I have my Game Boy Advance, but, you know, your phone is something you always have with you. Well, or it's something I always have with me. So, even when I don't have my Game Boy Advance with me, you know, I, I don't think to, to bring it anywhere. You know, my phone's always there, so if there are decent games on the phone, then, you know, I could just whip it out at a moment's notice and play something. Actually, I take that back. Um, Cut the Rope on Android is a really awesome puzzle game. But I already beat it, though. But yeah, if you haven't played Cut the Rope, definitely, re definitely recommend it. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a casual game, it's not, you know, insanely difficult or anything, but uh, I had fun with it. I mean, part of me wants to get, like, an iPod Touch or something, just for the games, since there are a lot of awesome iOS games that I want to try, but, eh, I'm kind of, I mean, I, I use a PC, I don't use a Mac, and I really don't cherish the idea of having to use iTunes on my PC. Because so it's my understanding that even if you... I mean, even with like the most modern iPhones and iPod Touches you can get, you still have to download freaking iTunes to transfer anything to it. Which is dumb. I mean, with Android, I can just do everything right on the phone in the Android market. And if I do want to, if I do want to transfer something from my computer to my phone, I can just do it. Uh, you know, I just plug it in into USB, and it just becomes a hard drive. It becomes a, uh, you know, a USB hard drive basically. And you can't do that with with Apple devices. At least the last time I checked. It's been a while, to be truthful. Um, I know where I need to go next. I need to hit a teleporter. I think I'll hit this teleporter up here. I need to teleport over here, and then I need to head down, and then go up to the, uh, the northeast quadrant of the screen, because there are three teleporters and a trinket up there that I haven't gotten. Pretty sure that's where the last, uh, the last crewmate is. I've just been kind of, uh, meandering but you know that's part of the part of the fun of this game is the exploration hmm let's drop down over here oh this way looks a little dangerous well danger is my middle name captain alfonso danger of Viridian. Rodriguez. See you later, CPC Gamer. Oh um, yeah! This part's fun. This is the mindfuck area that I was talking about. Well, I'm, I'm almost there. Yeah, I've been wanting to, uh, to stream earlier, because CPC Gamer especially, and any other overseas viewers, um, 7 p.m. here is midnight in in England, so it's a little on the late side. I mean, it's almost uh, it's almost 2 a.m. there, and I wanted to start streaming earlier, and I probably will. But uh, 7 p.m. I don't know, it just works for me. It works with my uh, my schedule, cause you know I get off work at three, 
I can come home, I can eat, I can uh, you know, do anything else I have to do. That gives me like a good four hours to prepare. I mean, I could probably start the stream a couple hours earlier. Whoa, it's infinite, man. No, it's just several sections that are exactly the same. Whoa, I can see forever, man. That's a handy teleporter to have. Alright, now we're in the mindfuck part. Now we really we really are in the infinite area. Yeah, this level is fun. Well all the levels are fun. Where do I live? Um West Virginia in the United States of America. It is on the East Coast-ish of the United States. So yeah, it's almost 9 here. I'm probably gonna, gonna call it here in a sec. Man, I love this music. You know, this was in one of the Humble Bundles. I think it was the last one. Or possibly the one before that. Definitely got my money's worth, money's worth with that one too. The Humble Bundle is always an excellent deal. And the most recent one has Limbo, which is another game I played through recently. Really awesome game. And Psychonauts, which I never finished, but I enjoyed what I played of it. Obey? I don't wanna! Hmm, this might be slightly tricky. Oh, damn. Uh... Hmm, nope. I like the artwork in Limbo. Yeah, it's a very beautiful game. Very minimalistic. Man, I don't actually remember what I'm supposed to do here. I mean, I assume it's that. And then I uh, need to do the same thing over on the left here and get to that save point. Hmm, that is going to be tricky. Uh, welcome, Angelic Kratos. Glad you can make it. Sorry, I'm about to uh, wrap it up though. But uh, I stream at 7 p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays, so you know, mark your calendars. Oh, I, I bet I'm worried about this the wrong way. I bet I have to do. Yeah, I see. And uh, if you want to get updates about when I'm streaming, you can. Damn, you can follow me on Twitch or you can subscribe on Twitter or Facebook. I post streaming updates to both of those locations, uh, facebook.com slash duke of the bump, or uh, twitter.com slash duke LPs. Hmm. There we go. I think I'm on the right track. Ah, there we are. Okay, well that looks like uh, as good a place as any to call it. Alright, well, this has been fun. Uh, I hope you enjoyed checking out Limbo. Uh, Limbo. I hope you enjoyed checking out VVVVVV. And I will probably finish this up on the next stream. Or I might do Binding of Isaac on the next stream, but I will finish this up uh, soon. We only have one more crew member, to crew member to rescue. And we only have a couple more trinkets to get. So, uh, check it out. Oops. Wrong window. Alright, well, I am Duke of the Bump. I will see you guys later.